Well, hello everyone and welcome back to 999. We have solved the puzzle of the operating room. I think we're done here. Uh, in the last one, we got a hell of a lot of information that I wasn't sure was true or not. And then we also solved a bunch of kind of, I guess, chemical based puzzles and the, and the like. So now let's see if we can get out of here. Not this way, you dummy. That's the entrance. It isn't locked, but there's no reason to go back. The only thing back there is a numbered door. I don't know why that was the door. I was like, wait a minute. That ain't it. Girl, that ain't it. Um, which door is it? I don't even remember anymore. Uh, it's not in here. So, uh, that's it. Oh, man. Uh, so we got the Jupiter key in the last one. Okay, so I think I know where we have to go, right? We have to go right down here. I totally forgot this was a hallway. Here we go. This is what we want. This is the one with the Jupiter key. It took me a minute. It's been a hot minute since I've done this. All right, so we've got the key in the item slot. So let's open it. Hey, hold on. What's wrong? Jinpei stopped, about to put the key into the doorknob. Oh, uh, what's up? What happened, Seven? Where's Clover? Oh, no. Yeah, where is she? <laughs> sleep with sleep with one fucking eye open because I know too much about her huh you know just chopping people's hands off somewhere it's no big Jinpei turned around Clover was nowhere to be seen oh god damn it where the hell did she go I don't know anymore uh, okay J just hold on a minute I'll go get her okay it's probably fine that we go alone right sure thing <laughs> well I mean they don't suspect her yet man I don't like knowing everything that I know Jinpei left Seven at the door and headed back to the operating room. Okay. Hello? John, have you seen anybody? <laughs> he found her standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Girl, it's okay, we've all been curious. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Uh, <sighs> what's the matter? She didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, Jinpei might have thought she was dead. What are you doing? What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? <laughs> I mean, come on. We, we, maybe we became a little attached. It wasn't the best joke, but it was something. An attempt to lighten the mood. Clover didn't laugh. She stood stock still and said nothing. Hey, Clover, can you hear me? What's wrong, girl? Perhaps it was something he'd said, or perhaps it was something else? Suddenly her mouth opened, and she whispered in a dry, dead voice, My brother might be dead. Uh, mm, maybe not? I don't know. Do you know there's a chance that maybe he's not? Um, but he is. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. Huh? I mean, to be fair... That's why we couldn't find him. Oh, dear. I mean, if she's if she's coming to this revelation in every ending, then how is every ending not the ending where she kills everybody? That's what I don't know. Dead. Yeah? I'm going to be next. What do you mean? What does that mean? Suddenly, the operating room felt very, very cold. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but she still didn't respond. Uh, uh, Girl, what's the matter? The silence grew heavier. Let's just get out of here. Yeah, let's go. We've got the key. Let's use it. That cool with you? Yeah. Come on, girl. We'll figure it out together. You know, and hopefully you won't murder me. Clover nodded almost imperceptibly. Still, Jinpei was glad to see she at least somewhat responsive. Hmm. Then it's time to go. Come on. I'll hold your hand in this creepy operating room. He put his hand on her shoulder and guided her to the preparation room. As they arrived at the door, she suddenly stopped. I'm sorry. Girl, it's okay. What was this? Why was she apologizing? Jinpei wasn't sure what to make of her. Was she emotionally unstable because her brother had gone missing? I'm really sorry. Girl, it's all right. You know what you really should apologize for? Uh, it did killing me. Just forget everything I told you, okay? Uh, 
done. Don't worry about it. Really. I mean it. Uh, okay. How could anyone pretend not to hear something like that? But something told him this wasn't the time to press the issue. Jinpei gave her the warmest, kindest smile he could manage. Alright. Come on, it'll be alright. Surely you won't be an axe murderer this time. Thank you. Right? Guys, right? <laughs> her smile was weak. It was almost painful to watch. Aww. I like her when she's like this, but I feel so bad. Damn, what the hell took you guys so long? Listen, I was getting it on. I know you're jealous as hell, but keep it in your pants. Seven looked up as they walked into the room, clearly irritated. You playing doctor in there or something? Maybe. What about it? What if I'm a real doctor? You don't fucking know. Maybe. Jealous? Uh, <laughs> why am I Junpei? Holy shit, dude. Junpei, best fucking protagonist ever. Don't act. Like, don't don't come at me. I'm just saying that he is. Seven avoided answering the question. Listen. They stood in front of the door. Junpei took out the Jupiter key. All right. I'm going to open it now. All right. Is that cool? Let's do it. You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, all right? Oh, all right. <sighs> Fine, then. Trying to be just Trying to be polite over here. He slid the key into the keyhole, oh, and turned it. Don't worry about that. He felt it unlock. Resident Evil. The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. <sighs> Beyond it lay a simple white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. All right. Let's get going. Let's do it. Hey, man, what's up with you? Nothing. Don't worry about it. You're so serious, you know? Listen, I just made a really funny joke. No? Can't Fine. you sound more happy? You know, get a little excited? Why? Because you you clearly are, though, right now? Right now? Mm-hmm. You sound happy as hell? <sighs> I think not. <sighs> oh, God. Not really. No, no, not with your face in my face. Jinpei turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. All right. <sighs> yeah, me too, Jinpei. Everyone here is so fucking stuffy. My brother, my brother might, might be, be dead. dead. I know, girl. I know. Uh... I'm going to be next. Yeah, that's the part that I think is new. Because I don't think we heard that before. Oh, oh my gosh. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that her brother was probably dead. And she was likely to follow him. Like hell I can. Hmm. Not after hearing something like that. Not true. Oh, Jinpei does care, though. He's a good guy. Hey, you found it. <laughs> Hooray. Oh, what the hell? Oh, oh my God. Did you see that blip? It's cursed. That's what it is. They left the operating room. The hallway took them around several corners and past several doors, but they were all locked. There too, huh? Oh well. Every door in this place is locked up tight. I mean, at, at least it's not us wasting time with doors we don't need. How about that one? Oh, I think we know where this goes, don't we? The final door was hidden in a corner of the hall. We definitely know. May as well give it a try. Uh, here we go. Jinpei grabbed the handle. As he made to push it open, a voice stopped him. The voice came from behind him and belonged to neither Seven nor Clover. Jumpy! Hey, girl! Huh? Hi, guys! He spun around. He saw someone running towards him from the other end of the hallway. There were three people coming toward Junpei and his companions. Jun? Hey! And Santa! And Lotus, too! Hooray for Lotus! They pulled up short in front of Junpei, breathing hard. Whoa! What the hell is this? What up, guys? What are you doing here? Don't worry about it. What? But, but I'm we didn't... Damn glad to see you, though. I really am. Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Hey, guys! Could you come take a look at this? Sure. She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. Look on the wall here. Okay. There was something on the wall at the end of the hallway. All right, the map, of a course. A map of the ship's interior? Indeed. It says Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor, then? Yup. 
Funny door how many seven. different options and we can get for like one map. It's pretty interesting. Door eight. Yep. They both eventually end up at this hallway. There we go. In fact. Yeah. Isn't that what I said? Well, okay. We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find door nine. This part's all the same. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Right. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door nine. <laughs> that's how the nonary game works. Yup. I see. M bitch, I have been through it. I know how the nonary game works. I actually don't. <laughs> Even after all this time. Jinpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. Wait a sec. No. Hey, yeah. could this lead to... He's figuring it out where it goes. As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. Oh! You've got to be kidding me. Yep, back where we started. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. We may as well go. Let's go. Yeah. And probably, I guess once we get in there, I'll skip and see if there's anything new. Don't know if there will be, depending on, you know, this route that we took. They moved as one for the door. Oh, I uh, almost forgot. We should keep this. Yep. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. Okay. Slowly, all five nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. Throw wide the gates! They poured through the doorway and ran into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. I knew it. Well, yeah, we knew it was on the map. They were just where the map had said they would be. We're back. Hey, guys, hi. Oh, only Ace is in here. <laughs> hey, Ace, in the how hospital you doing? room. You know, our favorite place. <laughs> now, I wonder I now see. if I can skip this. I believe I understand what you're saying. I'm going to see what happens if we try. Because it said, now, it, it should stop if we've seen, if there's any dialogue come up that we haven't seen before. So let's do it. Oh, yeah, look. We're saving some the, the time. Key? Oh, wait, okay, this is new. What's going on here? We're talking about a key. Ain't that what I just said? Yeah. I'm talking about the Jupiter key. Oh, we found yes. found in the operating room. This would be different because depending on what door we went through, we would have a different key. Okay, thank God it stops. Right, Junpei? Yeah. Yeah. We got it. Junpei nodded. Oh, the solar system keys. Yeah, we found one. We found a couple more in the laboratory in the kitchen. Oh yeah, I bet you did. And we know which ones those are too. Here, the Earth key and the Saturn key card. There they are. And with that, she pressed them into Jinpei's hand. The metal key had the Earth symbol on it and the key card had the Saturn symbol on it. I might lose it. It's probably better if you hold on to it. Well, I mean- That way it won't be my fault if it gets lost. True, and also you don't really have any pockets. So where are you gonna put them? Yeah, on it. I got plenty. Jinpei felt slightly less than honored. Now we have three keys that we haven't used yet. All right, cool. Yeah. The Jupiter key that we found in the operating room. Right. The Earth key that Lotus just gave me. Yep. And the Saturn key card that Lotus said was in the kitchen. That's right. We've had all of them before. Jinpei tucked the new keys into his pocket. Jun spoke. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long, straight hallway, right? I think so. Yeah. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. Mm-hmm. Then, next to the stairs... Yep. Wait! What? They were the first words anyone had heard out of Clover in quite some time. Her face suggested they weren't going to be very happy words. What about door three? Uh-oh, guess what it's time for. What? Time to skip because haven't we heard this and I assume that this is going to be the same. It's a good scene, so I kind of do hate skipping it, but at the same time, we've already seen it. Here we go. She wants to go into door three to see what's going on. So Ace and Seven go with her like before. Okay, and we wait. They're in there. And we're here. Now, it didn't skip me through that, so I guess this is also all the same. Like, it didn't stop me. 
Oh, of course. Okay, because we were doing this. Yeah, okay, I remember this now. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and say the same thing. There's a reason. <laughs> then they talk about the elevators. I hope it's okay that we're skipping all this. I think it is. All right, this is all the same. They're testing the elevator. Oh no. Guys. <laughs> well, we're skipping though. Oh no, but if we if we do the same dialogue, we'll just have to skip it even though it's funny as hell. Well, now maybe I want to see what the other one says. Let's see. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's not going to be as good, but we still have to see the dialogue, right? She was afraid because the only elevator button pointed down. That meant, of course, that the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Jinpei realized he hadn't seen elevators on the A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which meant that the elevator could only convey them to the lower decks. <sighs> Come to think of it, the lower floor... D-deck is completely underwater. Can you imagine picking this and not picking the other one? <gasps> what a loss. An elevator heading to a submerged floor. Yeah. That is pretty scary. I mean, it gets right to the point with this one, but the other one's so much better. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Right. Um, well, yes, I guess it did. Yeah. It didn't open right away after you pressed the button. There was a motor noise like it was moving... And then it opened. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, take a look inside. Is this the same as before? I can't remember. Jinpei jerked his head towards the interior of the elevator. This is when they're testing it to it's see... It's not wet at all, is it? Right. The walls and even the floor are totally dry. We just got her oh, quicker. Oh, you're right. They are. That's it. She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. Well, let's test it. All right, I'm going to see if I'm right about this. This should be the same. Oh. Yes, it is. We're gonna go down and see. Hold your breath, everyone. We're going down. Yeah, I know what I said. All right. <laughs> we got the picture. That was in the last one, too. All right, and here we go. And this is also the same, too, because they're just gonna look around and see the died. hallway. Oh, here we go. Okay, something new's happening here. Oh, no. Don't be so casual about something like that. Uh oh, if the ceiling breaks. I see. So this is like a thing here. At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can. Once we're done looking around down here. Okay. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Now then. Let's go look. Well, we know what's down here, right? There's only one thing. Jinpei glanced around the room they'd found themselves in. The first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Iron bars. Well, we can't go over there. I'm almost positive this is also the same. Yep. There's six. Now, we haven't chosen the store yet. And then they get the map. And then they'll go back up and let them know what they found. So this is all the same. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Oh. And, then, and now we have the realization of this. What I don't understand is how is this going to be any different when she's already... I don't know. It seems like it's been so similar so far. Everyone's going to go look at Snake. Now here's what I want to know. Uh... Okay, I don't know if there's going to be anything different here, but it looks like it just stopped. I remember, almost specifically in the last one, when we looked at this, that they said that his arm looked, like, blown off. But I want to say that the arm that they said was blown off was the same arm that Snake had told us in the past was fake? Or no, he didn't tell us. Clover might have said it. One of them told us. I believe it was Clover, actually, when we were in the room with the robot guy. Um... Did she not tell us that he had a prosthetic arm? So if if whoever this is arm was blown up, is it actually Snake in there? Don't answer this. This is just me theoretically spewing out crap to try to make sense of it all, obviously. Eventually, they reached the divider. They looked at one another and nodded slowly. I, don't, I guess this is different. 
Because it did stop. Jinpei put his hands on the divider and peered around the corner. Or maybe it's something they just don't want you to skip. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton, and time froze. He knew that in that instant, he would take the image before him to the grave. I- this might be new. I don't remember the cigarette carton thing. What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Let me just see. Okay, yes, this is all the same. We don't have to read that again. But I'm almost positive they said that his arm had been blown off. And if so, what does that mean? If it's not the same? I guess we'll have to find out. This is all the same here. They're trying to figure out what the hell happened. Was Zero still on the ship with them? I'm not sure. I hope that's okay that I answered that. I, uh, most people said that those don't really have any bearing. So I should be okay. Clover thinks we're all, we're all murderers. I guess it's possible. Now everyone gets mad at me. And Clover says nothing, so I'm the bad guy again. I'm the bad guy no matter what. No, that we just have to deal with it. That's just how it is. Ding dong, bing bong. And more. Now this should all be very similar. We're all gonna go see the doors and then make a decision on where to go. All right, that's the spooky elevator. That goes to two. We saw six. And then they're gonna find uh, the other room. All right, so, paper. <laughs> Lotus slaps the shit out of seven, which I wish I could have read again. <laughs> Cause that was the best. Here's this. All right, door one, door two, or door six. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, shouldn't door two also be grayed out? Or is it not grayed out because we didn't come to door two through this path? Is that why? Um, I wonder if that means it gives you a different ending, which it may, but uh, I guess it doesn't matter right now because I am going to do uh, door six. That's right. That's what I'm picking. And I, I hope I'm right. I door six. Okay. Jinpei flipped open the piece of paper. It read Jinpei door six. Of course it did. He'd written it after all. <laughs> That's a problem. Along with everything else. Jin spoke barely above a whisper, but they all knew what she said. None of these teams will be able to go through the doors they want. Well, too bad. You know what? I'm the leader here because I Over said and I so. I chose door one. Lotus and I chose door two. Yeah. That's not enough people to open a numbered door, however. True. The digital roots don't match up either. Uh-oh. Here we go again. A, a, a combination where I piss everybody off? I'm fucking here for it. Come at me. We've got similar problems. Yeah, well... June, Junpei, and I want to go through door six. I can't fix everyone's problems, can I? But our digital route is five. If we're gonna open that door, we need a one. Yep. Damn, what are we gonna do now? Uh, I don't know. Not my problem. What are we going to do? <laughs> I'm assuming they can work it out. Junpei crossed his arms and did his best to put his thoughts in order. The others followed suit, but with little result. Hmm. What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> Everyone's mad at me again. Eventually, Clover broke the silence. Why don't Seven and Lotus go through door one with me? Oh, good. Well, say goodbye to them, I guess. Her face was cold and flat, as was her voice, but her logic was sound. <sighs> All right. Uh, bye, guys. It was nice knowing you. Now, don't kill Lotus. Leave her alone, okay? Seven and Lotus looked at each other. They don't want to go together because they hate each other. Seven plus eight plus four is 19. One plus nine is 10. One plus zero is one. The first problem resolved. Ace spoke up. What about me? You can come with me. Isn't that obvious? 
Come on, Big Daddy. Wasn't one of the teams just complaining that they didn't have a one? Yeah. You mean I should join Santa's team? Yeah. Yes. You could do. Clover nodded, her face still cold and emotionless. Her attitude and posture could not have been more different than the energetic girl of only a few hours before. No one seemed ready to contradict her. Her response was understandable given the horrible situation in which she had found herself. But even so... Huh. What do you think, Daddy? You want to come with me? I understand. I'll go through door six then. Yay! If we do as Clover has suggested, we can all pass through a numbered door and no one will be left behind. Okay. This seems to be the most reasonable solution. Still seems reasonable, though, that she's going to kill us all. 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 1 equals 15. 1 plus 5 equals 6. 7. Lotus, what do you guys think? I don't have a problem with it. You going to deal with it? Just, uh, <sighs> Me either. All right, just don't kill him on the way out, okay? I, well, I mean, if you really want to, but... All right, then. We're good to go. Just don't kill each other. <laughs> See you later. Don't let Clover kill you either. Wait, Clover! Don't move on your own! Oh, God. Oh, I'll be going too then. Okay. Yeah, be careful. There we she should go. get going as well. Oh, man, I want to take Lotus with me everywhere, but that's okay. So this team then should be me, Ace, Santa, and June. That's a big team, actually, so that's pretty good. We haven't been with Santa and June in a long time, so that works for me too. At last, Junpei and the other six had managed to separate themselves into two teams. Clover, Seven, and Lotus headed to A-Deck, where door one was, near the main staircase. Junpei, Jun, Ace, and Santa, however, took the elevator to E-Deck. Okay. The ride to E-Deck was a silent one. This is E-Deck. It is. There should be a door at the end of the hall. We've seen it. All right, let's go. All right. Santa's words jolted them to action, and they stepped out of the elevator into a long, straight hallway. There it is. Looks a bit ominous, doesn't it? Oh, shit. Before long, they arrived in front of door six. There it is. You guys ready? Hmm? Yeah. Let's do it. And let's get to it. All right. One by one, they put their palms over the red. With a soft electronic noise, it authenticated each of them. What's going to be in here? The door opened, and all at once, the four of them had leapt through it. Here we go. Hey, I found it. It's right there. Oh, cool. Okay, it didn't take long. Fortunately, the dead was located easily enough. This one had been placed quite close to the door they'd entered through. They gathered around it quickly and hurriedly placed their palms on it for authentication one by one. All right. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, now we get to hear everyone moan. <laughs> Pause. It stopped. Yes, it stopped. All right. The countdown had ceased, but Junpei's heart was still pounding in his chest like a frantic thunderous drum. It felt as though it might shake itself up and out of his throat. Whew. I don't believe I'll ever get used to that. True. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. Also true. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. Okay. You got that right. Once <laughs> I'm out of this hellhole, I'm taking a nice long vacation. Uh, it has been a while since we've been with Santa, hasn't it? That's good news. <laughs> I agree. True. Let's go somewhere together. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I don't want to see anybody's face here. Maybe Lotus's, though. With that, the doom and gloom from before was done, and the mood turned somewhat lighter. All right, let's go. Let's do it. With that attempt at good humor, Junpei took a deep breath and began to walk. He jogged down the stairs at the end of the hallway and found himself staring at a large door. This door looks heavy. It looks different, doesn't it? I don't think we've seen a door with an opening like that. But it's not locked. Like with I'm a handle. It. Okay. He took hold of the bar that served as a doorknob and shoved it down. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> down his pants. The room beyond stopped him in his tracks. Oh my... Oh no, a fucking MC Escher painting or something. It looks like a hanger. It was gargantuan and made entirely of metal. None of the accents of wood or tile he'd seen in the rest of the ship. 
This room was purely functional, but utterly tremendous. Whoa, what the hell is this? Wait, is this like an engine room or something? Santa got out a few words before Oz stole the rest of them. The rest were too stunned to offer anything more than gasps. This has to be the biggest room so far. The ceiling is pretty high, too. This must be some kind of, like, engine bay or something. Huh. Could be two stories. Maybe even more. Oh, God. How are we going to get through this? This space could be utilizing the entire length of the ship. Goodness. What's that huge Kamaboko-looking building in the middle? I don't know. Jin pointed to the massive building in the center. Kamaboko? <laughs> Well, I guess that's as good of a description of it as any. Jinpei and the others were standing on a scaffolding that crisscrossed the whole area. The proper term was catwalk, Jinpei thought, although that didn't seem particularly important. I see stairs, so we may as well head over to them. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, but this section's barely wide enough to fit one person. All right, so look at my ass as I walk. You're right. <laughs> Nearby was a long iron staircase that made its way eventually to the floor beneath them. Whoa, you can't even tell the shape when you're this close. Yeah, it just looks it looks like a mess, doesn't it? You can even see back there. Let's check out the other side, too. Okay. They moved around towards the opposite side of the massive building, following the catwalk. Look at this. They hadn't said much as they walked, but as they approached the building, Ace suddenly spoke. This looks to be the steam engine room. Oh, I knew it. The steam engine room? Yeah. Yes, that thing that looks like a cross-section of a mushroom is the boiler. Okay. You see the three round doors near the bottom? Right. Coal is put into those and burned, which heats the water, producing steam. The same thing that drives a steam engine. I see. This one is simply somewhat larger. Right, because we're talking about like the Titanic era, so of course. I see. It doesn't appear to be running right now. I mean, it would be loud as hell, I think, if it was. I believe they call them a steam liner. The entire room was as silent as the grave. All right, let's split up. Then all of a sudden, Junpei heard a noise behind him. He turned, just in time to see June collapse to her knees. Uh-oh! Hey, what's wrong? Are you all right? What happened? He dashed towards her and wrapped his arm around her shoulders to steady her. Hey, June! No, what's going on? Is she sick? It was then that he noticed... Jumpy! You... Oh, you're... You're really warm. So this did happen once before, but it was way early, 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 early. Is your fever coming back? Yeah, this is the last... Like, we hadn't heard of it at all before now, after the first time. Yes. Yes. It probably is. Okay. But I'm fine. Please, don't worry about me. Okay. I just need to rest. And I'll be fine. Alright, have her sit down somewhere. Her voice was weak and forced, and it said a great deal more than her words did. Okay, okay, uh, here, sit down, uh, careful. Jinpei carried her to the nearest wall and propped her up against it. She let her head fall back against the walls as she no longer had the strength to support it, and drew a ragged breath. Thank you. You're all right there, girl. Her eyes were empty as if she was having trouble focusing them, and even speaking seemed difficult for her. Jinpei felt his hand ball into a fist and clench tight, his knuckles whitening. He had to find a way out, and quickly. He turned and looked at Ace and Santa in turn. Ace, Santa. Yes. Right. Let's do it quickly, boys. Alright, it's boy squad time. They might not have shared the depth of his emotion, but they certainly shared his concern. Alright, let's get started. Let's do it. Hang in there, June. I'm gonna get you out of here real soon. So that's how they kind of made up for the four people instead of three. She's gonna be out of commission while we do this, probably. She managed a small nod before leaning back to rest her head on the wall. Alright. Look at all this. Oh, this is gonna be like a huge puzzle. Guaranteed. Oh, the steam engine room. Jesus Christ, look how big it is. Well, I think we're going to have to start looking through this very thoroughly in the next one, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, and I will see you soon in the next episode. Toodaloo, everyone.